Hello. Hi, for friends, future friends. My name is Kristen. I am a wool hoarder, and we're going to chat about all things spinning and hand spun. Um, this is not a podcast. I am not a podcaster. This is not professional. I am sitting on my bedroom floor recording this with my iPhone. I have no mic, no nothing. So we're just going to go with it. This is going to be a vlog is what I'm going to call it because I am not a podcaster, I don't think. So um, I figured I would start the year and uh, document in a monthly vlog form what I'm spinning and knitting with my hand spun and talking about all the woolly things. So if that's something that interests you. Yay. Um, and if it's not, well, there's a bajillion other way, probably better <laughs> places on YouTube to go. Um, and yeah, so I figured I made notes so I wouldn't forget. Um, I figured I would start with the favorite thing I spun and knit last year in 2022. And that would be my, what is this called? Inclination shawl, uh, which is, which way is the right side? This is either way it goes, but this is the wrong side. It's rather large and this is the right side. But you can't really tell a huge difference. So maybe if I, I don't know where to sit. So we started here. It starts here and then we knit and knit and knit. And this is where we wound up. Um, so this is all hand spun that I spun from Nest Fiber Club Colorways. Um, and I love it. It's a little bright. I tend to go for black, white, gray in clothing choices. And where I started, I thought like, there's no way I'm ever going to wear those colors, but that's the end that really gets hidden when you wear it anyways. So I don't know. I really just wear it as a blanket or shoulder, shoulder blanket. Um, because I live in Florida and well, it is usually very warm. Anytime you go in a building, it is freezing because I swear they have their air conditioner set at like 52 degrees. So if we're going out to eat or anywhere, I always have a cozy shawl and this has been my go-to. So I have, I think I have the colorways. Um, this is, I don't know, this is probably backwards, um, but this is my spinning control cards from last year and I think all the colorways I did are in here so we did so we started with solar power and that's like that very yellow and pink that you see so that was July 2021 club color from nest fiber um heart strings is in here it's like purple um, that one is January, 2022's club colorway. That was on Polworth. What was solar power was BFL. Um, days of your, did I use that one? Yeah, that was the Rambouillet. That was December, 2021. I didn't use harvest moon. Verna was another BFL and that's March, 2022's colorway. I'm not going to say this right, Pros Proserpina, and that was on Falkland Merino, February 2022's colorway, and we ended with Garnacha, 
And that was Super Fine Merino, September 2021, Nest Club Color. So I think that's all of them, right? Because that was six and we used six. So those are the colors used in here. I really like this end. That end's my favorite. This end, not so much, but I love it. And I spend this as a three ply, uh, I don't know, DK Warston. I've, the thing I like about knitting shawls with hand spun is it doesn't really matter. Um, especially for a lot of Andrea shawls, like the asymmetrical, you just start and then stop when it's as big as you want it. So a thicker yarn, you know, it's going to grow a lot faster. Um, so yeah, that was my favorite make. Actually, I have another favorite, but it was a gift and I knit that with, um, it was a hat for my dad. And I knit that with a, um, the first fleece I ever processed. It was a nightmare for a first fleece, <laughs> um, because just, it was not a fleece for a hand spinner. It was just really, um, there was a lot of waste and it was, I can handle the vegetable matter in a fleece. Um, and it usually, you know, processes out pretty easily, but that fleece, I don't know <laughs> what happened. It was almost as if after they shaved the sheep, they just like rolled that fleece around on the barn floor because it was just so bad. Um, but, and it took me so long <laughs> to get it clean. Um, I had to go through and like comb each lock a bajillion times just to get all of the specs of VM out. And I just, but it made the most beautiful yarn and I did a hat with that. And I don't think I have any photos of it. I can get them though, because I'm sure when I visit my parents, I can take a photo. So I mean, knit lots of socks last year. I didn't do any real garments. I finished one. I will talk about that in a minute. Um, so yes. Um, Okay, the control cards. So I showed these. And this isn't, is it going to? These are all, it's not, it doesn't want to focus. These aren't all the yarns I spun last year, but they're all the yarns I spun intentionally. So when I'm spinning, I make control cards and it's basically just as I'm spinning. So this is the single right there. Focus, please. Um, and then we do a ply back on the bottom and then the finished yarn at the top, just so when I come back to it, and this was actually that lamb's fleece that I was just talking about. I have the leftovers somewhere. I just don't know where. Um, and then I put any notes on the back. So I know there's lots of different ways people, no, it's not wanting to. There's lots of different ways people keep track of their spins and they have notebooks or they use an app or their notes on their phone. I've tried lots of different ways and I've found for me this way works best. Just everything's in one spot. Um, and I just write all the information on the back. So on the front is my single. And this is just so as I'm spinning, like I can make sure I'm staying like the same. There's a note on that. I'm consistent. So I can make sure I'm staying consistent. So I usually don't put them on like in this little booklet until they're done. So I just have like the one card. And as I'm spinning, like I'll just compare, I'll hold, you know, pull out a little bit and just compare it to my singles on the card, make sure we're good. Um, I may kind of, do a ply back on the wheel and compare it, make sure my like, treadling hasn't changed or anything. And then usually I don't really 
come back to these. But do I have that one in here? I think I do. I think it's at the end. So like this CVM Cormo is in here. Now I've already spun this, but this was a fleece. And while I spun it, I've not finished processing this entire fleece. And I'm actually knitting something with what I've spun. And I'm going to run out. So I will need to wash more. Don't be like me. <laughs> because I just get really excited. And I wash a bit of the fleece. And I process it. And I spin it. And then I knit. And then it's like, oh man, I need to <laughs> go back and finish. So when I go back, when I run out of yarn, which will be soon, I'm going to have to spin more. So it'll, it's nice to have this. So I can go back and I can see, um, well, I didn't really write too many <laughs> notes on it, but I do know I was spinning at a ratio of one to 22. Um, and I have my singles to compare. So that's good enough. For as long as I know what ratio I was spinning at and I have the singles, I can pretty much get that same yarn. Um, I don't know. Each spin, I feel I put different um, things on here. So this is, this was some Super Sock by Wound Up Fiber. And like I have, I'm spinning this to knit the DRK Everyday Socks. I did a four ply uh, and how I spun it. I spun continuous back and I used the leftover samples to spin a six ply yarn, which I just had two bobbins. Yeah, I had two bobbins of singles left. And so I just chain plied those two together, which was easier than I thought it would be. Um, Chain plying was the first way I learned how to ply. So it's just second nature to me. I just think of it kind of like crocheting with my fingers. Um, so it was pretty simple. And it actually made a really awesome, super round yarn, um, but not much to do any. I I'm not sure I may have. I may, these are all just my leftover ones. But this, yes. So it's this actually. Where? Oh, are you going to focus? So it's still about maybe a heavy fingering sport. Yeah, I'd say like a sport weight, um, six ply. I love these socks so much. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked now. Um, so I think really it's just what do I think I'm going to want to remember and I write it down, but always the ratio I'm spitting that fiber on and hopefully if I'm smart enough to remember um, how I'm spitting it. So that CVM Cormo, I pretty much spin everything continuous back. So I'm sure that's how I spun that. I just wish that I had written it down on that card. We shall see. Um, so that's these are mine. I need to make another one for 2023. Not really spun anything on the wheel. I'm actually spinning this currently. Um, okay. So what did I spin last year? We have lots of hand spun. Uh, so these are all hand spun braids. Oh, hey, here's the this was that first yarn and you can still see even as I was knitting with it, there was, um, VM coming out. It's a two ply, right? Yeah. But it's so round for a two ply. <laughs> um, and it's got so much elasticity. I really love this yarn. I wish I had more. There was probably, I can't remember exactly, but I think in this fleece, it was like a 70% loss, which is really sad because it was actually a really expensive fleece. Um, I think the shepherdess is kind of new into the, that world, the hand spinners world and selling her fleece. I, I don't really know what happened. Maybe she's not, but I've processed several fleece since and nothing has been this bad and nothing has been this expensive. So 
lesson learned. Um, but I spun this last year and it's one of my favorites. This is Corey Dale. This is Nico Blue. Is that right? Nico Blue. Yes. Um, on Corey Dale from Bath at Spindelicious. Um, if you've never spun Beth Sprays, you're missing out because she is just a genius when it comes to dyeing. Um, so I actually spun this for a sweater that I'm probably not going to knit. I don't know. We'll see. But it was to be the contrast color for the Junction sweater. Um, so I had reached out to Tashi, who I'm sure... If you're into spinning at all, then you've seen her. She just started a podcast at the end of the year here on YouTube. Um, and it's it's different from her Instagram. It's Stitches in Starlight. Her Instagram is Tangles in Starlight. Um, so I've known Tashi for a while. We actually met before spinning. Like We both got into spinning at the same time. Um, we are each other's enablers. And um, we met through scrapbooking. So um, I love to scrapbook. And I met her through that community and we both got into like spinning at the same time. And it's just been wonderful. Anyways, we were supposed to knit last year, the junction. So we were spinning to knit the junction sweater and it started off great, but it tapered and we didn't do it. <laughs> um, but I do love this. This is going to be such a beautiful contrast color for something at some point. Um, so this is one of my favorites. This is from We Chickadee Iridescence. I love this. It's just, these are my colors, earthy tones. This is a leftover ball from the contrast color that I knit my dad's hat in. So it was these two. Different weights. This was a bit heavier. Um, I did the Harlow Whoop the Harlow Warston. Words are hard for me. Um, just so you know, like certain words, especially if they have an R in them, are hard for me to say. Um, so this was actually a bat and I have photos of spinning this. Either they should be in my feed, but I'm pretty sure I have a highlight Maybe. I know it's in a highlight somewhere. I don't know if I have a specific highlight, but it's in a highlight. This was a bat from Beautiful Fiber Life. Beautiful Fiber Life. I believe that is her name. If you've yet to spin her bats, her bats are amazing. She does, like, she makes the most beautiful bats. Um, I've spun two or three, and they just, with the amount of different fibers that are like this had like flax, it had tensile, it had so many like planty fibers, but the way she does her bats, it's just, they spin up so great. So I did really love this one. Um, it was one of my favorites. The colors are just the blues and greens. What else did we spin last year? This was one of my first yarns I ever spun. It's just in here. This is from um, Wolfine, right? Yeah, and it's Demure. I knit with this. All my first hand spuns, I knit um, the Shift Shawl. Shifty Shawl? I don't know. They're all called Shifty. Shift this or the shawl version of that. I don't think I spun these last year. These were for the Strea cardigan that I decided to go a different route. Actually, these four. This is Corey Dale. This is from Ashford, the Ashford Corey Dale. I don't think I spun this last year. This is Cinder and Smoke. We'll talk a little bit about this yarn in a bit. I didn't, I don't, maybe I spun this. I should really rate the dates because now I can't remember when I spun these. I love this yarn. I don't have any idea what to knit with it. So if you have ideas, let me know. Um, I consider myself a very like newbie knitter. Um, I've, I've knit a handful of things. I've 
knit for a long time. Um, my first knitting project, I think, was like 2014. Um, I've been crocheting since I was in middle school, but I still consider myself a very much newbie, um, especially when it comes to like patterns. Like, I don't know all the, you know, I don't really understand how to use Ravelry, if I'm being honest. I try. Um, but this was Falkland, which you can totally feel that it's Falkland and it's quite, and I don't believe this dyer is dying anymore. Republic of Wool. wool. I think she died. I don't know if she dyes fiber anymore. Last time I looked, she was just dyeing yarn. Um, but I just, I mean, these colors that like peachy and the blue and olive. It's just so good. Um, this was by Banshee Fiber. This is Paul Worth. I started this on a drop spindle and I finished it on the wheel. It was actually done on a Turkish uh, drop spindle. This looks like my first yarn, but it was not. Um, <laughs> this was my first time um, trying to spin on um, support spindles. I'm like, why can't I think of it? Um, and it was just not the best. I mean, you can see it's not the best. It'll knit up just fine. Um, but it, it's a learning curve with support spindles. Um, the styre's not dying anymore. And then I know I I've checked a few times. Um, and I can't tell you the name because I don't remember. This is a braid that I spun from uh, beautiful fiber life. Again, this is a 50, 50 BFL silk. And, um, I did not chain ply this. I believe I just split it into two. Wait, this is the two ply. Yeah. I just split the braid into two and spun end to end. And, um, I mean, there's a bit of barber pulling, but it really maintained its color. Um, it goes from the red to the yellow to the blue and knit up. It'll, it'll do the same. It turned out really nice. And I think that's all I have left over. I knit quite a bit with hand spun last year. A, a lot of things as gifts, socks, lots of socks and um, hats. Oh, I did spin this. This is a 50-50 silk camel. Y'all, this was so hard to spin. Um, yeah, just silk and camel is, it's, it's hard. Camel's hard because it likes to just, especially with this, like, it's just, it's slippery, but then it doesn't want to draft and it just, it gets, it gets hard to spin. Um, so you can see it is not perfect because that camel is just fun. <laughs> um, I think, I think. That's all I, oh, I did spin. I spun this for the inclination shawl, but I just, the colors weren't matching up. I didn't, I thought it would in the braid, but once I spun it, I was like, no, this isn't going to go with anything. Um, so I actually knit my mom socks and this is what I have left over and the rest of it. I spun the year prior. This is rainbow rust from spin delicious. You need to go and order you some because it is the best. Oh, and this is chain ply. So this is just a two ply. Yeah, this was just a two ply. And then this is the chain ply. So you can see, I mean, it's the same colors. It's just the colors and the chain ply are more, I don't know. There's no like marling. There's no barber pulling. Um, that's that's what you get with the chain fly. Um, I have to say, I'm a fan of taking a fiber, splitting it. So if it's going to be a two ply, splitting it in half. If it's a three ply, trying my best to spin it, split it evenly into thirds and spinning end to end. I'm not a fan of like the fractal um, spins. They look pretty, like they skein up nice. I'm just not a fan of what they look like knit up. Um, 
I much prefer spinning end to end. But it's personal choice. That's me. Okay, so those are the braids. Well, dyed wool. This is the naturals that I spun all last year. This is more of that Shetland lamb. So I do have enough to make something else. It's just so pretty. I love it so much. Um, and I spun that at the beginning of that year because I have the card. Or maybe it was the end of 2021 and I finished. I don't know. The rest, most of this is spindle um, spun on a support spindle. So this is Jacob. And we spun this on support spindles. I got 48 yards out of that and 126 yards on this. And here's the rest. We've got 116 yards here. So this was all, I don't know where this came from, if I'm being honest. <laughs> my guess is, I, so my wheel only has a four ounce bobbin. So there's only so much I can fit in there which I'm fine with spinning singles. That works for me. But when it comes to plying, I really miss my bullfrog. And I can get a bigger like flyer because I have the, I have the Spinolution Echo with the accelerator, which you can only use the four ounce bobbin on. And I could get a new like flyer set up or a second one for that to have like the eight ounce or 16 ounce. It's just, if I'm going to spend money, I'm going to spend it on fiber. <laughs> um, so we make do. I also have tons of, oh, I should have grabbed them. Maybe I will. Um, storage bobbins. So like having one wheel, a lot of people have multiple wheels so they can work on multiple things and different wheels do different things. The Spinolution Echo with the accelerator, like the ratio is just, you can spend so many different ratios on that wheel. One wheel is great. Um, and I have tons of storage bobbins so I can and do spin multiple projects at a time on there just because their bobbin system is so simple on and off. So it works for me. I would eventually like to get a Saxony style wheel because those are good for long draw and long draw is my favorite. I can do it on my wheel it's just why not have a wheel that was designed for long draw, right? So one day, okay, so what else do we have? We have some Suffolk. Um, I don't know if it'll pick up because of the white. We spun that last year. No plans. This is some tunas that I spun. I actually knit socks with some of this, which I will show you when I get to that. This is Gulf Coast Native. Um, and I love Gulf Coast Native. It's been so beautifully. And Florida Cracker. So these are Gulf Coast Native and the Florida Cracker are like, it's sheep that are around me. And this came from the mill that is literally right behind my house. We could... I mean, I could walk. The, it'd take a while to walk there. We could ride our bikes, but there's no sidewalk. It's like on a main, not a main road, but a fast road. It's like a back road, but cars go really fast. And there's like no, um, it's just two lanes and there's no, you know, what is it called? Something like where bike, there's no bike path, but there's also like no, like if you get off the road, you're in the grass. Like there's no there's a word. I don't know it. Okay. This is leftover CVM Cormo. So I had spun this on, not this, but I had spun, I forget how much I had. I spun it on the wheel. I knit a sweater. We will chat about. And then I had this leftover and I was like, what if we spindle spin this? And you guys, I wish I spindle spun the whole thing. It is beautiful. And I did these on sports spindles. I prefer support spindles. This is, um, I made my daughter's socks out of some Shetland roving that I got. Note to self, I will never buy Shetland roving again. I will only process it myself because Shetland roving, 
is not the same. If you get a fleece, a good fleece, and you process it yourself, you, if this was my first time spinning Shetland, like if I thought this was like all Shetland, I would never spin Shetland ever again. However, my first fleece was a Shetland and I love it. Um, so just, I think that's, I think there's a lot of people that don't understand like why spin the yarn when you can just go and buy it. And I get that, but there's a reason because this yarn is not this yarn. And I know this is a lamb's fleece, so it's going to be softer anyways, but still. Okay. This I actually just finished on the wheel. It's a sample. So this is a Romney fleece. It's a Romney's lamb's fleece. Um, and I took, I don't have any notes on it. I have it out there. I took, I don't know, 20 or 30 grams, um, maybe 40 tops. And I washed it and I spun it into a three ply just to kind of sample and see how it would turn out. And it's so good. There's so much drape. It's going to be so nice. And I'm going to, I may make this a four ply if I'm being honest for the final. We'll sample a little bit and see because there's a shawl that has cables that I really want to make. And this just wanted to spin thin. Okay, that's that. Oh, and did I talk about this? This is spindle spun. Um, I don't have the fiber because this is a ginormous mess right here. So I don't have, let's put you there. You can go there. I bought this from Echo View Fiber Mill, which I believe has sadly closed their doors. Um, but they used to have like these sales or like if you were a part of like their club, like you got access to shopping discounted stuff. Anyways, I'm going to take a sip of water. They had this fiber um, that they had put on their machines and then I don't know. For some reason, it wasn't spinning the way they wanted it to, or maybe it kept getting caught in the machines. I'm not sure. So they had the machines all ready for it and then decided to pull it off the machines and they sold it for super cheap. I think for an eight ounce ball, it was, it doesn't go in there. Why am I putting that in there? It's because I'm talking. Um, I believe uh, three, four, maybe $5 tops for an eight ounce ball. So I got four of them because, hello, that's super cheap for wool. Um, and I find for me, when I don't spend a lot of money on the wool itself, I can play more. So like I can learn more. So for that, since it was so cheap, I was like, I can just play on my support spindles and teach myself how to become better at support spindling after I tried with that one that I showed you a bit ago because it was so bad. <laughs> and, um, so that's what I'm doing with it. I still have a lot left. I did spend quite a bit on the wheel and this is not all of the yarn I spun because I knit, but I also don't donated quite a bit of hand spun. Um, we had a local family that no, it's from Ukraine and um, has family over there and friends and everything. And they were taking donations. Um, and specifically, um, there was a shelter there with um, older women and they requested yarn, A, probably for things for them to keep busy, but two, it gets cold, right? And um, so I don't know, I had thousands of yards of this spun on the wheel. And so I donated all of that. I donated quite a bit. I had quite a few people donate also. So this isn't all of it, but I'm talking about this. So this is that, and this is what the fiber looks like. So this isn't a full ball. I've been spinning on this. Um, so spinning some on the wheel. I wish I still had that to show you. 
and then spinning this on the spindles. I prefer the yarn that's on the spindles. It's just so light and airy and much softer. If you get itchy with wool, you probably wouldn't be able to wear it. I feel, and we'd have to see if, when it was knit up, um, but it's not itching me. It's not poking or anything. So I love this. I don't know what it is, but it spins beautifully. Okay, so that's that. What else did I have on my list? Okay, so what am I bringing into this year? So I brought my whips, um, things that I started last year. That goes in there, that goes in there. And I figured I would share some of those because I will probably talk about them next month because this is just going to be a monthly vlog where we can go over what's been on the wheel, what's on the needles. How is Joy finding me through spinning? That's my word this year. So every year I pick a word of the year, a word to focus on. Um, and this year that's joy. So we're going to talk about all the joy spinning gives me. Okay, so on the needles coming in from last year, we have, I'm considering this one. These are the Curio socks from Andrea Mowry. I knit these during her like fall knit along where you like try to knit a socks in the, like a long weekend. So this was before I knit socks on, or not on, of course you knit them on needles. This is before I started knitting them two at a time. And so I've heard this from a lot of people. Andrea said it herself. If you knit socks separately and like you knit one and then you knit the other, there's a slight difference in the fit of the sock. One's a bit snugger. And well, same goes for me. Also, I'm a new knitter, so nothing's perfect. So this was my second sock and it fits perfectly. This was my first one and it was very snug. Um, Specifically right in here. Everything else was fine, but like right here was super snug. Now for this heel, you like knit the, you knit it up and then you put like waist yarn in to, you know, and then you keep knitting. And then when you're done, you pull the waist yarn out and you're able to pick up those live stitches and do your heel. I hate this heel. I will never knit this heel again. <laughs> um, it is not my favorite. Give me the flagel heel. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I say it. The flagel heel because it's my favorite. So I've already ripped this out once. I didn't have any more of this yarn left. Or did I? Is this the tunas? Why did I say that? Maybe I did. I don't know. But I had more of the contrast color, which I spun. And this is Cozy by Wee Chickadee. If you've not checked out her shop, you should because it's super good. Um, so I ripped it out and I tried knitting it again. Well, we're having the same issue. So I think what I'm going to need to do is just extend out the, like, instead of, decreasing like it's saying just kind of knit around a couple times and then start decreasing it just I need I need more width in here so I need to extend this somehow I don't know it probably wouldn't take long to figure out and just sit down and do I just haven't so I have that in my work in progress pile I am also bringing in Oh, let me go grab that. Okay. Sorry about that. I forgot to grab something. So one thing I didn't talk about spinning was last year, summertime, I think, I got into a huge cotton kick. And spinning cotton on a Tockley, which is basically, that's sharp, just a super fast, support spindle. Um, and this actually right here is all my cotton. There's the, that big bag is raw cotton right here. So I went through a cotton kick and I spun all the cotton. So we have lots of hand spun. This is all natural, like the natural color of the cotton. This is, I believe, cinnamon. 
the cinnamon color, and then this. So you can tell there's a bit of a difference. This is a bit more, it's got like a hint of, it's, this is more like white and this is more not white. <laughs> um, I have um, lots of spindles that I need. So this is the green. I want to say this is the green. So this, when it's done, oh, I don't have that ball of yarn. Well, like after you boil it, because you have to boil cotton to like when it's done, it's a whole thing, <laughs> um, but it will be this color. So it's green. So I got on a cotton kick spinning it. I love spinning cotton um, and it really helped A, my long draw and B, support spindling, like really getting into the hang of it. Um, so if you've yet to spin cotton why won't you focus you really should um and it's just so soft and nice so after spinning it i was like oh i could knit the velocore because that calls for cotton and it's like a cropped oversized like boxy t-shirt so i was like let's see maybe i can and I cast on for it. Um, and then it just sat. <laughs> so we are almost to the point where I split for the sleeves, almost. And this is all cotton. So all natural cotton. Um, like the color, it's not dyed. Hand spun. These are the three colors. Um, my glasses keep falling down. Then I still have lots. I still have a little bit to spin. I have the rest of that green to spin. I have some on uh, storage bobbins that need to be applied up. Um, but this has been sitting. I was spinning the cotton. I started knitting and then I was knitting and spinning and then just knitting. And then I was done with cotton, which that happens, you know. So this is just sitting. I'll probably pick it up soon. I'd like to have it finished you know, for spring slash summer. Um, we'll see. I don't know. It, it's supposed to be big. There's supposed to be a lot of like positive ease. I don't know. I think it might be too big, but we'll see once it's finished. Um, okay. So that is one thing I started last year that I have to finish. This is my Stria cardigan. Yes, again, by Andrea Mowry. Um, and which way is the right side to side? This is in timeout indefinitely. I don't know. I may just rip this out. If this is still sitting on my needles at the end of the year, if I haven't knit on it at all and still am mad at this, I will just rip it out and use the yarn for something else. I do love it. It's hand spun. It's Corey Dale. I don't have a cardigan. I mean, I have cardigans, but all store bought. So I really would like to have a hand knit, hand spun cardigan. But this is a lot of knitting. If you've knit it, you know it's the half fisherman's rib. So you're knitting two rows just to get one row. And well, I knit this and then I split for the sleeves and I knit into the body and I ran out of yarn and I had sampled yarn for this and then knit with what I sampled and then um I knew I didn't have enough of the gray so I ordered more and so when I got to the body I ran out I spun more of the gray from Ashford it was the Ashford Corydale their natural gray and I know there's like a difference with the dye lots and everything but I guess I didn't think because it's not dyed. I was just like, oh, it'll be the same. It was not the same. So where are we at? And they're almost the same, but they are not the same. And you can see that here. So that darker, like very faint stripe, that was the original gray color. And so as I spun this and knit it, 
I started seeing like, wait, these don't match. And then the more I nap, I was like, okay, well, maybe I can just pretend like it's color blocked and it's supposed to be that way. And then I knit a few more rows and it's like, no, I can't do this. So I ripped it out. That's where those, um, like these colors came from. And the purple, because originally I had these as the stripes. So I ripped it out and then I was like, well, I can just do, I don't think I would ever purchase a cardigan that had like these as stripes. And I was like, well, will I actually wear that? I'm starting over anyways. So we just went, I was like, I'll have enough of that dark gray to use that as the stripes. And then that was the second time I ripped it out. I had just a bit more than this done and I messed up way back here <laughs> and I couldn't, I tried to drop down, but again, newbie knitter. And I just, I couldn't get back. It just, you could tell that I had messed up. So I just ripped it out and started over. And then I got into the body, slipped her sleeves into the body that second time, ripped it out. And now this is where we are. And the last time I knit on this and every time I go to get it, I just think that should be done. With as much knitting, like I should at least be halfway through Sleeve Island by now. Like this should be done. And it's just left me feeling super frustrated with it. Like I don't get happy feelings when I pick it up. So I'm hoping at some point this year I will get happy feelings again. And if not, we're just going to knit it out and go from there. Um, the only other thing I'm bringing from last year is this, which I keep forgetting the name. It's the Birch Creek Bee Indiana by Rachel Reese. Uh, this is again, hand spun. You won't see anything knit without hand spun. <laughs> Um, this is a fleece I got late last year. I posted about it on Instagram. Did I share my Instagram? I don't think I did. It is stitched vintage. This is why I don't consider myself a podcaster because you're just not good at this. So this is the Birch Creek bandana. This is actually the wrong side. And this is the right side. I love the brioche striping. Um, this is my first time doing brioche. And then I did the Harlow worsted hat. I was like, okay, I've got brioche down. I like this because it almost looks like it is woven, like the fabric from a distance, like it looks woven. Can we see that without focusing on me? <laughs> um, so this is, so the dark color is Loki and I have his fleece above me. <laughs> it still needs to be completely processed and washed, but I sampled it, immediately pulled off more, washed and spun for this. I will not have enough. I will have to do that again, pull off, you know, wash more and process and spin. But I just, I saw the yarn and the yarn is just beautiful. It just made, these both came from the same um, farm. Loki is a Shetland Finn. And Cookie is a Shetland. And you guys, these yarns are just so scrumptious. So that's what I did. I spun them and said, I need to knit that. And I like cute little neck scarves, not like scarves, but like cute little, I don't know. I have like little bandana scarves, like the satin ones that like you like tie. And it's like a little, like, I don't know, bandana, <laughs> little, little neck scarf. I wish they would come back in style um, because they have not yet. But I found this. I think on Instagram or maybe, I mean, I got the pattern from Ravelry and it's basically just a square. You cast on whatever it says and then you knit until it measures. I think it's 26, like 26 by 26. And then you fold it diagonally and you've got like a little, it's like a, I think cowboy scarf, but that's not what they're called. 
Um, but I just think it's going to be so cute. And then that's it. And then this year, so last week I kissed on the sealess sweater. Um, Casey at Young Folk Knits, who I love so much. Um, she was talking about um the doing the bougie sweater knit along, which she is doing. And it just made me think I would love to have that. Like a hand spun, hand knit sweater that is just so cozy. I can pull over. It's like oversized and just I can wear it with sweatpants or I can wear it with jeans and it's cute. I just could not find what I was envisioning, like a pattern for what I was envisioning. And then Taylor from Wool Needle Hands, Wool Needles Hands, who I also adore, shared in a recent video last week or the week before the seedless sweater as, um, what was that video? Like five seamless sweaters to knit or something. And so I immediately went and got the pattern. It is by Jonna, Jonah Hi Hiatella from Lina Magazine, Lina Publishing on Ravelry. Because one's, I think, for like the UK and then one's for the US, right? And Lina Publishing is the US based one. I don't know. I knew. <laughs> at all of this. So I've knit quite a bit. Um, I love this. This is actually the CVM Cormo, um, that I was chatting about way long ago at the beginning. This is taking so long for me to get through. Um, but I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out because I, um, the pattern calls for like a brushed alpaca. So it's a very, very thin, but fluffy. And so it's knit at a bulky, like yarn weight. Um, and this is not a fluffy alpaca. This is CVM Cormo, extremely elastic. I mean, this yarn is just so, there's just, it's so springy. And it's like a DK worsted weight, worsted, heavy DK to medium worsted weight. So I wasn't sure if it would work, but I wanted it to. And um, I feel it is. My gauge was a bit off. I do have the sweater buck ultimate. What is that? Um, it's Amy. Amy Herzog's Ultimate Sweater book. Yeah. And she talks you, if you don't have that book and you want to knit sweaters, get it because it's so good. But she just walks through like all the different like sweater constructions and then like how basically customizing it for a perfect fitting sweater for you. Like in all the different like, um, like Reglan and like a yoked sweater and it's set in sleeves, like all the different ways and like the patterns and like, if you're using this weight and you get this many stitches, this is what you're going to cast on. Like she just walks you through that very well. So between looking through that book, making my like swatch and then figuring out my stitch count versus the pattern stitch count, all I had to do was go up a size. So I figured out like what, uh, how many stitches I'm getting for four inches, which is, this is about how many stitches I'm getting per inch. And so if, this needs to be that many inches. How many am I casting on? And da, da 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 da. So that's how I did it. And it's turning out okay. Um, it's kind of uh a, a bit of an open, like it's not a very tight knit. Um, but I think that'll be perfect. It's super warm. Um I've tried it on, it's fitting great. I just love like the folded collar and just the simple raglan. Um, we have quite a bit of ease, which I wanted. It's got a lot of ease in the arms. There's a bit of waist shaping in this pattern. So we're going to decrease a bit, do, do the hem, and then the arms were decreasing. So I think it'll be really good. Um, I'm hoping to finish it soon. 
But this is the one that CVM Cormel, I still have to wash <laughs> and spin some of the place. This is all I have left. Um, so we may make it to the hem, maybe, because <laughs> we're almost there. Well, not almost. Um, it says to knit eight and a half inches. I'm thinking eight. I'm going to try it on at eight and see, um, because I'd like it to be a bit cropped, not super cropped, not this cropped, but, um, I do like my sweaters a bit, um, just hitting right at the waist. Okay, so those are all the whips. On the wheel, I have, I'm almost done spinning this. This is Peach Blush, um, dyed by, created by LCB on Merino. This is two ounces. I'm almost done with the other two ounces. This is actually, I started spinning this for another Andrea Maury shawl. I forget which one. Did I write that down? I didn't. The satellite shawl. So she does like a pink and um, like a darker pink and yellow. And I have all those braids. So um, I am doing that. Probably will not knit that. That's moved down on my list. Um, I haven't spun the other braids. So I don't know. We will see. On my spindles, I am finishing some Cheviot. So this is an ounce of the Cheviot. And then I'm just spinning this over the fold because um, it is top. And I don't like spinning top on supported spindles. So a supported spindle is just, we've got a little bowl. Let's see if we can do this. I don't know for you to see. And then, nope, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Let's see, can I set it on my water? Um, maybe. Oh, I'm not really. You can't really see. Well, a little bit. So we're we're spinning and <sighs> try that again. So we're spinning and then we're drafting. So we'll just do super quick. So I'm doing it over the fold. So now it's taking a worsted prep to a woolen prep. And right. you're just hopefully not messing up like I am on video. All right. And then we'll just pull that off. And bit splice it a bit and get started. All right, that's better. So, support swindling is very much slowing down the process. Um, when I first started spinning, it was very much like, How much yarn can I spin and how fast? And that is great. And there's a the time and the place for that. And I love my wheel. Um, but support spindling is a lot slower. Um, and when you're trying to record yourself doing it, it doesn't really like to go like it should. Um, so I really enjoyed just kind of slowing down the process a bit. Let's see, are we going to connect? So depending on the fiber, um, it's very much like a, it can be very much like a drop spindle where it's kind of the park and draft. So you're spinning or flicking and then stopping and pulling and letting that twist in. Um, the more you do it, the faster it gets and just allowing the spindle to keep spinning while you're drafting. Um, it depends on the prep too, like a really nice, um, fluffy roving. Um, a lot of people use roll eggs. I'm not a fan of roll eggs. Um, I like a nice fluffy roving or spinning from the fold. I have found that to work best for me. Maybe I just, and I know I need to get better at making roll eggs. I'm, I'm not good at it. <laughs> they just 
don't ever turn out for me. Um, okay, so that's a bit of the sport spindles. This is Cheviot. And then I just have constant. Um, this is that from Echo View Fiber Mel. It doesn't want to. I have a few spindles with that. That's this fiber. Um, and that's just, I'm bored and don't want to think about um, spinning, like what I'm spinning and just spin. Um, okay, and then I just need to clear off my storage bobbins. We have more, I think this is either Gulf Coast Native or Florida Cracker. I'm going to apply that up. I've got cotton that needs to be applied. Um, and random just bits that I just need to clear off the storage bobbins. And um, that's the plan. The only other thing that I have to do, or that's a, a big plan for this year, is this, which I'm actually really sad about. So I spun this and started this in like the fall of 2021. And I finished it January last year, I believe. And this is the Illuminate by Andrea Mallory. This is hand spun. This is that CVM Cormo. So I showed you this was spindle spun. This was spun on my wheel. And then the contrast color is Cinder and Smoke by Spindelicious, which is this. This is actually a combo spin. So one of the plies, so I had one braid of Cinder and Smoke on BFL and I had one braid of Cinder and Smoke on Cormo. So I spun each of those to a bobbin and then plied them together um, to make this beautiful yarn. So same colorway, just different fiber. Um, I find it worked great. I don't, Knitting with it was fine. Um, this is my first time doing color work, so don't judge. Um, and first time knitting a sweater, any sort of garment, sweater, anything to actually like wear um, other than like a scarf or a hat or socks or something. So I love it. The thing is, I think I can't wear mohair. I, and it's so hard because this, I mean, it's a, I feel a little bit of prick, but nothing like this when it's on like the neck. It's not really even so much here. It's just the neck. Um, and I think I knit my color work too tight, obviously. <laughs> um, so it's pretty tight in the shoulders. I should have went up a size. I did the smallest size. I'm petite. I just, but I have like wide shoulders, I feel. Um, plus I think I knit the color work tight. So it's a bit tight in the shoulders and the arms. Um, it's like not negative. There's, I don't think, I think it's just zero ease. And I, I mean, I like it there to be some positive ease there. So I just don't wear it. A, because it is itchy. I could make it work if it didn't just feel like it's choking me um with the itchiness but just all that combined I just I want to re it up so I'm gonna rip this out I'm so sad this is so good. um I'm gonna keep the uh cinder and smoke as the contrast color um I didn't like cut I just carried the yarn up yeah I just carried the yarn up so everything should come off in one piece I mean obviously except for the sleeves um, everything's 100% wool, so we can fit splice it together if need be. I don't know what the main color is going to be. I'll have to spin that. And I have quite a bit of like natural colors. Here's tons. So maybe the Cormo. I think this is Cormo. Yeah, I have a pound of Cormo. It's a very white doll. That's the only problem. Um, It's so nice, but I'm not sure. I just really love this natural oatmeal color. And I've tried wearing a um, like shirt underneath and like a turtleneck. It just, 
it pokes me throughout. It's just, it's not comfortable to wear. So I'm going to rip that out and re-knit it at some point. That's my plan this year. The sleeveless sweater, redo the Illuminate finish, um, the Velocor, the B Indiana. And that's really my main um, thing. Like I don't have a make nine. I don't really have any other plans. I would like, I would prefer this year to be a um, heavy spinnier, um, more spinning than knitting. And then next year can be a knit year. <laughs> um, we are also doing um, no buy. So I did a no buy 2022, no um, braids, like no indie dyed braids because I have too many. I still have too many. I have not. I did great. Didn't buy any last year. Um, but I also, and I spun quite a bit. I mean, a handful, but I still have so many. So we're continuing the no buy of any dyed braids. Because I have more than enough to choose from for any projects I could think of. And we're adding to that no buy any processed fiber whatsoever. So no roving, no top, no natural colored, nothing. Because again, I have too much. Um, I've got seven fleeces oh, above me in totes. There's five totes up there stacked. Um, need to process those, work through those. Uh, the only like little side note to that would be if I make it to any like fiber festivals where I can see the fleece in person. So I've only bought fleece like online never seen it in person. So like if I'm able to go and physically see and feel and pick a fleece, then I can add that to my stash, but only one at most two. Cause again, seven fleeces, like three still need to be washed and like, <laughs> there's just too much. I actually counted. We have 88 pounds of wool here. Um, and it's just, I don't need to add any more to it. So if you're on a like no buy like me, I will not talk you into buying anything because there will be no acquisitions. Um oh the only other thing, so I don't have a yarn stash. Um I just this is well I you've seen my yarn stash that's hand spun but like commercial yarn. This is it. So sorry for the crinkling that's gone away now. This, um, is all I have. A lot of this is deep stash from like 2014, 2015 one-off skeins, but I did, and I can't, was it 2021? I think maybe it's right around the time the shifty was released the pullover and everyone was knitting it. And I didn't really think spinning to knit it. I was like at the very beginning, I think of my spinning career, uh, maybe it wasn't when it was released, but I'd seen pictures on Instagram a lot at the time. So I bought a sweater's quantity for that sweater in spin cycle, which is pricey yarn. And I've not knit that yet. Um, so I have a lot of it kicked up. So I have the other, I have one more of these for the main color. And then my three contrast colors, they are caked and ready to cast on. Um, because I spent so much money on it, I have to get it knit. Like, even though like, I don't find joy in knitting from anything other than my hands. But for me personally, like spinning is like my happiness. Like that's my joy. And then knitting comes second. Like it's joyful. I enjoy having something to do with my hands, but if I could only do one, it would be spinning. Um, which I know is like, that's odd. Usually people like are hardcore with the knitting and the spinning is second. And that may change, um, in the future. But for me, um, I enjoy the spinning. So, and then I really get joy from knitting the hand spun. And so, and I've tried knitting with non hand spun, um, a couple sweaters that I've just ripped out and just haven't, cause I haven't, it's not for me. Um, so, but 
this is like hundreds of dollars for a sweater. Um, I need to get it knit. So that is my other plan this year. So the illuminate, the Sila and the shifty pullover thought about doing the shift again, but I'm only, I would only wear that type of sweater buttoned up. I like an open sweater. Um, it doesn't really, from the photos I've seen, it doesn't really sit well. Not if it's open, you know, it's kind of designed to, and I just, if I'm going to just wear it buttoned, why not just do the pullover? That's just my thought process. So I'm, I, I played with the idea and the more I thought about it, I'm just like, if I really want buttons, I can just like put buttons on, on the pullover, right? And don't have to stick or anything. So, um, which I won't, I, I don't really wear cardigans buttoned up like that. I just wear kind of the big flowy open cozy cardigans. Okay. So that is, um, th those are, that's my recap from last year. Those are some of my plans. Um, hopefully I've inspired you to knit something with your hand spun because there's really not anything. I know a lot of people talk about like what are good patterns for a hand spun and all of that, but really any pattern, you can do any pattern I and mean, you may have to configure some things such as, you know, like the Sila. This is not the yarn that was called for it. It's not even close, but it's making such a beautiful sweater that I love. Someone else may not love it. They may want that floofy um, alpaca mohair type look, um, but I don't, especially, well, alpaca may not bother me, but it seems mohair does. Um, okay, so I will hopefully see you next month in February and have a finished Sila sweater to show you. Hopefully some finished yarns unwound applied up, maybe some new things I've spun, some new yarns, some new things I'm working on. And um, thanks for spending an hour with me. <laughs> I can feel long-winded. Um, have a good rest of your month and I will see you in February.